Welcome back. We are sitting down with Samra Zafar and talking about her story. So, Samra, we left off talking about how within the first five years of your marriage, you had completely changed from the strong, confident young woman you were mm -hmm. to someone now who is completely unrecognizable. So I also want to take you back to another moment that happened, which was, I would say, maybe one of the most, like, it's a very dark space mm -hmm. um, during your time. And I'm going to quote a passage from the article. So, and I quote, um, I was having suicidal thoughts all the time. I was convinced my life was over. One time I took a razor blade into the shower and thought about cutting myself, stopping only when I heard my baby cry. Yeah. When I read this sentence and I, heard, I could just envision you being there and then hearing your child crying and then that shift happening internally. So can you tell us a little bit about what was happening during that moment for you? You know, abuse is, when you go through abuse, it's kind of like living in a dark box with no light and enough air that you can just survive, but you can't breathe freely. It's, it's like living in constant suffocation, fear, always walking on eggshells, and it's the darkest place ever. Mm -hmm. And people associate abuse only with like beating up and physical abuse, but at that time, there was no physical abuse happening, or very minimal. There were just one or two isolated incidents, but, but it was the constant emotional letdown, like always saying, you're useless, you're worthless. Mm -hmm. You're treated this way because you deserve it. Yeah. You don't deserve any better. And when you hear that on a day-to-day -day basis, you start believing that about yourself. And then you think, you know, my life is completely over. If this is what my life is gonna look like forever, I don't wanna live anymore. Mm -hmm. So I did, I mean, I, all the time I was fantasizing about either running away or, or, or dying. Mm -hmm. I would pray to God that, I, you know, um, to give me death instead of this life. Mm -hmm. But I also, in you know, somewhere deep down, knew that I need to live in order to give, make sure that my daughter does not go through this. And I think that was like the moment that shift. You know, I heard her cry, and, and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like what's going to happen to her if, if I'm not if not if I'm not around? She's going to be get married at 16 or 17 or something, and this would happen to her too. And I need to protect her. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what just snapped me out of it at that time. And psychological abuse happens a lot in, in our culture, and, and this is kind of the way that they, they want to control the girl or control yeah. the girls yeah. uh, and women. And kind of. And then by the time the physical yeah. abuse happens, you have completely lost your entire defense mechanism. So tell me about the turning point where you finally just said, that's enough. And, and you had the courage, to, because I know in our culture, for a woman to leave a marriage, or to stand up and say, you know, I've had enough. Oh my gosh, uh, all that, that, is, that is something, I know, I've been there, done that, right? So, um, when you do that, you're, you're automatically just attacked. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that experience, the stigma that, that came with, with being. Yeah, so right. that was, um, you know, after after a very long marriage, and there were there were times when I had tried to leave before as well. Mm -hmm. they, you know, there was um, a time when I had left and, and my father passed away. And I think that was like the pivotal moment for me because at that time I, I had hit rock bottom. Like there was. I had lost my one support system. Mm -hmm. um, I was sent back to the same abusive marriage uh, in the same house in Canada because my father was no longer around to mm -hmm. take care of my, me and my responsibility. No education, no job, no hope. And, and you know, sometimes when you hit rock bottom, there's no way to go but up. Mm -hmm. uh, the last uh, dying words of my father to me were, you don't need anyone. You have the strength within you, so take charge and and, and get out of it yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of just stayed with me and, and then when I did come back here, I, that's when I started babysitting and tutoring at home and finishing all my high school courses. I couldn't go out of the house and get a job or study, so I did everything at home. And, and I was allowed to do that as long as I was lit at home and supplementing the family income as well, so, but I would still save just a little bit every month and it took me a few years to save up for my uh, first year tuition and then finally, um, uh, I started university in 2008, uh, and that was after 10 years of marriage and after having both my children. And it was, it, it you know, even though like I had, I, I had the money at that point and I had all the, you know the roadblocks figured out, but there was a lot of um, you know uh, sort of emotional backlash that came yeah, to me. Yeah. Uh, but by that time, I think I had grown a little bit of a thick skin, and. Um, and then I was in university and I started getting counseling there. And that's when I learned that what's 
what was happening to me was abuse mm. and it was not okay it was not my fault mm. it you know it's not something that i could change or fix by fixing myself because up until that time everybody had said to me oh you know it, it's something that you're doing just yeah. try to keep him happy or try to cook better try to be a better wife a better mother a better daughter in law try to you know find out what makes him angry and avoid that and and stuff so it's always the blame's always on yeah. the woman mm-hmm. right because somehow if this is happening to me it's because there's something wrong with me and even if let's say there's not oh, if the reason that i'm not okay with it that's being a problem yeah. they know like so you should be like i was told by his parents that i should be very grateful that at least i'm not getting beaten up uh or you know they would give me examples of other women who would be getting beaten up all the time oh, you look at her like she's such a great woman she gets beaten up every day and she still stays for the family honor so at least you know you're not in that kind of a dire situation it's just you know once in a while or whatever um and you're living in a house and you're eating and you're you know so what what do you what more do you need so like the idea of a woman fighting for her respect mm-hmm. and her freedom of choice is something so alien human right basic, basic exactly human right. basic human right like we don't even have those mm-hmm. right so um so when i you know started university and i started learning of all this then i i started questioning things and abuse, and challenging the behavior at home and then the abuse just got worse so mm-hmm. emotional and verbal it turned into more and more physical and and at that time you know i had had enough awareness and um about my rights as a woman uh, and in canada and and the most important thing was confidence mm-hmm. that you know yes it's going to be difficult it's not going to be easy um i will face a lot of you know difficulties but maybe there's a minuscule chance that i can make it and i'll take that chance yeah. and you did you have made it you you went on to pursue further education you ended up getting your masters in economics yeah. now and now you're also you know speaking worldwide speaking to other women about it and you've also initiated brave beginnings mm-hmm. yeah so can you tell us quickly a little bit about that as well yeah absolutely so i mean like hard work paid off the the cultural backlash was humongous after i left mm-hmm. i was called you know a bad woman and with no character mm-hmm, and she's mm-hmm. a, she must have been an unfaithful wife <laughs> that's why this happened right. yeah. or um you know uh, you're leading your girls on a path to like shamelessness or whatever mm-hmm. um but uh, but yeah eventually hard work paid off i worked five jobs raised my children went to school full time and graduated as a top student in the entire university and now i'm on their board of governors uh the youngest person ever to be elected as an alumni governor and uh you know i'm publicly speaking worldwide on this cause and um the reason i did that was because i knew that my story was not just mine no. it's the story of millions of other women and girls out there who continue to suffer in silence in the name of honor in the name of shame and stigma or you know because they don't they feel they have no options or support and that's what brave beginnings is all about is to provide them with that hope and that support uh that you know once you leave it's not a big bad dark world out there that's going to you know chew you and spit you on the road side yeah. there are good people who and you know who will believe in you who will hold your hand and and teach you how to build a life and we actually uh attach women uh who who have escaped abuse or oppression we we attach them to mentors who work with them one on one to get their mm-hmm. life back on track and rebuild a new life of respect and happiness This is a cultural issue and I'm so glad you know we have a predominantly South Asian uh, audience who is watching this and these are things that we have to kind of address and and it's so amazing that you used your story to help other people and and found your purpose because I think everything is that change happens reason. change happens yeah. only when you break silence right so yeah that's what it's all about Sir, I mean honestly after hearing your story I still have chills because you've overcome so much yeah. and the fact that you're sharing this story with us and all of our viewers I'd like to personally thank you because oh, I'm yes. sure there is at least one viewer out there that has been touched yeah. and hopefully this conversation will spark the change that needs to happen in their so, life. So, so thank you so, so much. much for coming. Thank you on very today. much for having me. Don't go anywhere because we'll be back with more right after the short break.